Hi there, welcome back to A Maker Studios YouTube channel. My name is Leon Epp, and normally you would find me on my own YouTube channel, DIY Beauty on Purpose, where I create beautiful home decor all on a budget. Today we have a fun and easy DIY where we're gonna create a centerpiece for summer for my dining room table, and I cannot wait to show you what I did. But before we get to the actual DIY, I wanna go over the supplies and the items that we're gonna be needing so that you can take notes and hopefully recreate yourself at home. All right, the first thing that I am going to be using is what my main piece will be on my tabletop which is this wooden serving tray. I got this at, I think it was Home Goods, and it was $20, $19.99. I thought it was a great deal. I did add some felt pads to the bottom so it doesn't scratch my surface. The fact that it had the handles and it was just such a beautiful shape. I just really loved it. Another piece that we are going to be using is this family wooden decor. I believe this is from either Target Dollar Spot or Dollar Tree. I want to say it's Target Dollar Spot, but it doesn't have the price and they normally have it. So that's why I'm maybe leaning towards Dollar Tree. But nonetheless, both of them carry a lot of uh, wooden words like this. And uh, this is one that we are going to work on today. I'm also going to be needing uh, or using one of these little wooden house shapes. It's part of a four set and it spells the word home, but I've been using them separately because sometimes just some adding a little detail like this to a vignette works really well. So we're going to work on that as well. We're going to use this cute little green mason jar that I got in a set of two at Target Dollar Spot. And then we're also going to be using this full little plant that is also from Target Dollar Spot. And uh, we're going to be painting it and doing some things with it. Um, just some extra little things, ricers like this one that I got at Target Dollar Spot for a dollar. It's always nice to have something like this. Every so often it's nice to just place a plant or a candle or a mason jar on top of it. It just adds a little bit of height and it makes a world of a difference. So that's that. We're also going to be using a Maker Studio mesh stencil. This is one that I recently got and it's beautiful. I've used a couple of their pieces for my last project, but it has some really beautiful fonts and just some beautiful uh, styles. I love this little birdie. I think it's just so cute and it has some little greenery leaves. So we're going to see what we're going to use, but I really like the way this is um, design so we're going to use that we're also going to be using some of their rub-on transfers i love rub-on transfers i have yet to use um a maker studio so i'm excited to actually use them and um and see how that goes i think it's going to be very beautiful but let's get started the first thing i want to do is get this family uh word painted so we are going to remove the little jute string here we're not going to need it we're not going to be hanging this one we're gonna cut that and then I see a little bit of like fuzzies on the sides no big deal but I do want to sand that down just a little bit to make sure that I have a smooth edge as possible and I'm just using uh, let's see this is a 220 grit sandpaper it goes to my electric sander but sometimes it's okay to use like this so I'm just gonna like I said sand down the edges this is just to clean it up a little bit just looking a little messy there we go it just looks a little bit better let's clean this off so that's that I'm gonna use a, a um, Amy Howard's at home uh, one step paint this is a sample size four ounce and this is their spa white and I've been using it a couple of times and I kind of like it usually I tend to go with a very bright white this one has a little bit more of a grayish tone so if you can see it compared here to this you can see there's a different it has a grayish maybe even beige or pinkish undertone um, but I don't mind it I actually like it so we're gonna paint this now I'm only gonna be doing the front of the word I'm not gonna try to do the inside so I'm just gonna grab a small angled brush that I have 
and we are just going to start painting it. And it's probably gonna require just one coat, but we'll see. Um, if it requires more, it's okay. It's absolutely fine. So quickly, this paint covers. It's really, really good. And this is just going to be the base. The first thing we do to this piece, we are going to be applying the rub on transfers once the paint is dry. And I'm really excited about that. Again, I've, I haven't used a, a Maker Studios rub on transfer, so um, being able to do so is going to be a treat for me. I have used other rub on transfers, and I love the concept. I love that you can customize so much with them and so easily and it looks like something is very high-end or very customized and it all it took was just to add a rub-on transfer so I really love how versatile they are all right so again I'm just gonna keep painting here and it's gonna dry fairly quickly. It's just, I'm not adding much paint. It just has really good coverage. So, um, it's gonna be dry really quickly. And then we're gonna be able to move on to the next thing. I'm adding also very little paint on the brush because I don't want it to drip on my sides. I'm also trying to paint outwards, so I'm not doing this because it's gonna drip on the side, or at least try my best not to do that. Isn't that a pretty color? It's like a really off-white, soft white and um, Again, I always go with the bright whites, but this one really has my heart. Okay, that's it. I think it doesn't need another coat. So we're gonna let that dry and move on to the next step. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the little pot here and we are going to just tape some of it because we are only going to be painting half of it. So that way we still have that terracotta look but we can paint the bottom and just have a little bit more of a detail. So we're just gonna tape this. And of course, trying to keep it as even as, as we can. You know how hard it is to keep this tape straight, but that looks pretty good actually. All right, so we're just gonna paint the bottom. We're gonna use the same spa white from Amy Howard. And I'm gonna use the same brush I just used <clears throat> to paint it. And again, just keeping it really simple, just brushing it. And I just love, again, how you can do something so simple to an item that maybe you already have at home. Maybe it's not something you go out and buy. Maybe it's a flower pot or just anything you may already have at home. And it just doesn't quite go with the either season or the theme that you like or the style that you like. So adding something as simple as a stripe or just painting the whole thing may be something that um, all it needs is that. And then you have yourself a more customized piece that will work for what you want to do so it's just so simple all right I'm gonna remove the tape Review the paint. I think that looks so much better look how beautiful that looks it's crisp and all it needed was one maybe one and a half coat so we're gonna put that to the side and let it dry right, I have my family 
wooden sign nicely painted I think I did a fairly good job a little bit of um, drip right here but no big deal so I really like the way it's looking and we are going to use as I mentioned earlier this rub-on transfer and what I'm hoping to do is um, transfer it but use as much as I can from one piece because I I don't want to waste it so let's remove it So what I'm going to try to do is cut. That way we're not risking any other pieces. So let's just cut this outside piece. I'm trying to keep it in between each design so we don't cut any design. Okay, we may have to come back and get more, but that's okay. So now I'm going to cut each individual piece and that way I have a little bit more manageable pieces that are going to be easier to rub on okay and then this one okay so now, now I have some individual pieces that's going to make it a lot easier to apply I'm gonna use this tool that I have from Cricut. It's just like a little, like a little spatula. All right, so we're gonna start with some of the smaller pieces. So basically I'm just gonna remove the transfer. It has a backing to it. It's not like a sticker, so it doesn't stick, but um, it will um, stick to, to whatever surface you're applying it to. And just make sure the surface is nice and clean and it's not dusty or anything like that, which this piece is not because we just we just painted it. So I have found that when doing transfers like this, it's it works really well if you pull and rub at the same time. So see how I'm kind of pulling and rubbing at the same time? And there's that piece. Isn't that cute? All right, so we still have some left, so I'm gonna do that somewhere else on the piece. We're just gonna do that throughout the piece. That way it's going to just look natural and even again just rubbing and lifting is um, works really well for me have you ever used rub-on transfers um, even if it's not a maker studios have you used them do you like using them let me know in the comments um, what your thoughts are on them I love them I absolutely do I'm gonna put this whole one here I think it's gonna look really good right here maybe a little Get a little higher right there. Oh, that's gonna be perfect. It's so easy to apply and it's very, um, very satisfying to just apply it because it's so easy and then you get such a beautiful custom look. I just love, all right. I think I'm gonna move on to this one. Um, it just has this, um, I'm not gonna cut it just gonna apply it all right so we're gonna do a real large one here you can also use a like one of those large popsicle sticks that you can find pretty much anywhere anywhere Oh, that's beautiful. All right. Um, I'm gonna, gonna try to do it where it kind of overlaps to a couple areas. one kind of and there you go gosh can't get over how beautiful this is all right and then I think this one I'm gonna do here at the bottom 
but I'm not going to rub the top, just use the bottom part. how cute that's looking and I might just leave it like that I think that's I thought I would use more but the more and more I look at it I like the details I like that it's just here and there so yeah so I'm gonna put these back um, that's another beautiful thing about a lot of the project uh, products from a maker studio is that once you use them you can reuse them again um, of course the mesh stencil and then these once you use them of course you can't use them again but if you have any left over by cutting them like I did you are able to just place it right back onto the packaging and um, save them from another time so perfect all right we are going to move on to the little wooden house piece we are going to paint this one using English boxwood by Amy Howard and you can find these also on a maker studios website so and it's everything's linked down below that you can go I did just use the same brush as I used earlier with the white um, the spa white but it's okay I took off the excess paint so and we're just gonna paint the edges so we're just going to do the edges of this one. I think that would be a nice detail without it being completely painted. And um, we're going to add a design to the front. So, and I'll show you that here in a minute. All right, so there's that one. Another beautiful tone. I'm just being very careful making sure that I don't have any bleed and now it's time to pick pick what stencils I want to use and then I'm going to cut off the ones and I definitely want to use the little bird there because I just think it's so cute and we may use this one here too so that works and So I'm going to just take it, remove it. So if you've never worked with these mesh stencils, they're just like a sticker that you can wash and, and then reuse if you need it. And um, again, the key is just have a clean, dry surface. This one has quite a bit of uh, excess surface around the bird, so I think I don't have to tape it. But you can always tape if you want to, um, just to protect the surface even more. But it's covering my little house here quite well. so. We're not going to, let me see. Okay, I think I like it there. We are going to place it. This is iMaker Studios Squeegee, and um, they have another type as well, but this one, I, I kind of like this one a lot. For the little birdie, I'm gonna use this beautiful yellow. This is You Are My Sunshine, and this is a Maker Studios Chalk Art. It's like a paste, and um, really easy to work with and you don't it goes a long way literally a long way especially for a small stencil like this so I'm just gonna grab a little bit that may that might be enough but if it's not we'll come back but I'm just gonna start placing it and squeezing it see how quickly that goes that's it look everything I had left over so I'm just gonna put it right back in and remove look how cute that's perfect. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and I'm going to go wash this with some just water and make sure that I remove the paste from it. That way I can reuse. All right, so my bird is dry. Now we're gonna apply the little greenery here. And um, 
kind of want to make it like this. You know what I'm talking about? So we're just going to place one here. And then there's another one that I'm going to cut and place it on the other side. And I think that's really going to complement the design. Uh, this is the Together Forever Green Tone Chalk Art Paste. Look how beautiful that is. And again, a little bit goes a long way, so not much needed. We're just going to place it in. There it goes. That's it. Put the excess there. Remove it. Look how cute that looks. All right. We're going to use this one same way, but we're going to place it on this side. I'm going to try to keep the angle as close as possible as the other one so that it looks that looks about right. Put it there. Grab some paste. How easy is that? So easy. And there it is. I love the way that is looking. All right, again, we're gonna let that dry. We're gonna wash these to make sure that uh, we can save them for another use. All right, so normally I just place it right in the center. And again, because I used the felt pads, I'm okay with it being on here and ready. And the first thing I want to put is the family sign. I think that's going to look so pretty right around there. And then I want to have it a little higher. Oops. I want to have it a little higher on this side, so I'm going to place this here for now, and we'll move things around as I um, start placing things and just see how things evolve. So I think this right here will look very pretty. My little green mason jar, I'm going to remove the lid. I think I'm going to put that there. And let's see. This greenery, let me see if I can put it in here. That looks cute. Move that one further to the back because I do want to put one of these sunflowers right here. I think that would look so pretty, especially to pull from the yellow on the little birdie that we just stenciled. And I think the little birdie here will look really cute. I think I like how that looks. So this is it for today. You're gonna to have to let me know what you think of the centerpiece and what do you think about the rub-on transfer and all the supplies that we use today from a maker studio. Don't forget that um, everything that I use today as well as a lot more supplies, you can find in the links down in the description box. So make sure you check that out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You're gonna to get tons of inspiration every single week. And also don't forget to visit my channel, DIY Beauty on Purpose. I hope you love what you see there and I hope you join my YouTube family as well. Have a blessed day, have fun creating, and I'll see you later. Bye.